Hello and welcome back to the Gameplay Ability System tutorial series. I'm Thomas M, and today we're going to be going through the Ability System component and adding it to our character. So let's get right into it. So anything that's in the Ability System that needs to use abilities needs to have an Ability System component. And if we look at our character, we don't want to break anything that's existing on here. So we want to make sure that this functionality remains. We can run around, we have a camera that pans behind the character and follows him, and we can jump. And that's really about it. So let's make sure we don't break that. First thing, we're gonna pop open our folder structure, and in C++ classes, your project name, you should see a character class that it created. If you're using the Blueprints class, you'll have to create a C++ class that derives from character, and then you will have to make your character pawn in the game derived from your new C++ class, and then you'll just have to add this code. So what we want to do for this, we can see our character, let's look at his header file. I'm not a huge fan of how they split these things up into two separate public things. So for my sanity, I'm going to move this, because I like to put all of my public things together. This is just a personal preference, and I don't like to have two dictations for no reason. Um, I mean, personally, this is just easier for me to read. So we're going to make a U property that we're going to hold our ability system component in. Make that a U property. We want that visible anywhere. That way we can see it in our blueprints, we can access it. But we want to do read only in our blueprints. And we'll go ahead and give it a category so that we can find it easily. And I've noted here that it really likes when you use this meta tag. Allow private access equals true. And we want that to be a pointer to the ability system component. Those of you that are new with C++, I do promise this is an intro course. Pointers are something that you should look up on Stack Overflow, kind of the, the general overview of what a pointer is. You know, a pointer is an address to a variable. It's not actually the variable in the way that you, it normally is. You know, for now, just kind of include the symbols as I include them and try to read through some documentation if you have some time to look at sort of what a pointer is. So we have our ability system component. And then we're gonna need the ability system interface. So first thing I'm gonna do is add the include file so that I can get the code for it. Ability system interface.h. And then I'm gonna inherit the interface. Okay. And a lot of times this will pop up something with IntelliSense, implement pure virtuals. But you can just click on the interface here and peek at it. And I'll just take this function definition here. I'm going to leave the equals zero in there because I'm not going to need that. And our parent class. And we'll just return. Uh, so I'm getting some weird behavior in here that I've got a. It's showing up red, but I really don't think it should. And I'm seeing this mark here that solution is not finished parsing. So basically, it's not done going through all of my files and figuring out how to make IntelliSense work. So one of the ways we can kind of speed this along and see if it's working, is so we can just try to compile the project now. All right, now that that's completed, so it looks like I didn't actually have any code errors in there. So this is still showing up red, just means that uh, Visual Studio needs more time to do its thing. And now we're gonna go to our C++ class, and find the begin play function, which we don't have by default, actually. Interesting. So we're going to implement it. Void begin play, and that's an override. And then we'll go into our character, and just for my sanity, I'm just going to put this stuff on the, anything I write on the bottom, just so it's a little easier for you to find. So this is. Play. 
So then in our begin play function, we're going to set our ability system equal to a new ability system. So we're going to use the function create default sub object. So what this does is this creates a default sub object of the type. So this syntax is something you'll see in C++ quite a bit. When you have a function that is not type specific, it's called a template function. So you have to input what class you want to work with. And then we're passing in the normal input data that you'll see in other coding languages. That's just text is saying, hey, we're gonna make this string into text. And this quotes just says, hey, we're gonna make these characters into a string. So all we're doing is we're creating a default ability system component by the name of ability system and we're storing a reference to it in our variable ability system. So now our player has an ability system and we can compile our code. Okay, so we got an error here. Use of undefined type U ability system component and this is the wrong file. So I know that the U ability system, because I do this all the time, the ability system component here, using it undefined. What this means usually is you're not including an include statement that you need on the top of your code file, on the top of your header file, sorry. You should have all of these include files. This just says I want to use code from these other files, like we added this ability system interface. So we just need to now include the ability system component. So the way I know this is I know it's the U ability system component. If I didn't know what that class was called, because a lot of times in this gameplay ability system, you'll find that there are 30 class definitions inside of one header file. So something you'll want to do is say, okay, I have an undefined type U ability system component, and I know I just wrote code that's using a U ability system component. So why don't I copy that and I'm gonna paste it in my solution control my solution explorer and search for it. And then you'll find the definition and you'll find what class it's in. So I can see U ability system component is in ability system component.cpp. That's how you can find like which include file you need to be using in the event that something doesn't work for you. All right, and now that we've compiled, we can pop open our third person character blueprint. So what I did there, that was real quick, I know. So I grabbed the character in the world outliner and you can click right here on type and just open up the blueprint that way. There's a lot of really handy tool tricks like that in Unreal to just navigate around easily. So now I can just search in my class defaults for abilities and I can find this new ability category that I just created. And I have a variable ability system. So I know that I at least have the U property, it at least exists, right? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start adding information to this ability system. We're gonna define what is a character in terms of its stats. So if you had a character sheet, like in a tabletop game, you'd have your strength, your dexterity, wisdom, charisma, and intelligence. And then from there, you'd have your modifiers and your additional feats would give you other numeric values. In the gameplay ability system, we call these stats attributes. This is a good time to jump over to the documentation. If you have it handy, I recommend taking a look at just what an attribute really is. I think of it as a stat with a little extra mojo. It says not only do I have a strength score, but I have a base strength score of whatever it is I started with, and then I can make changes to it temporarily, and then remove all of those changes and get the original value. And there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do in attribute. But for the most part, we think of them as a float value. For now, the only thing that's supported is floating point values. So with all that being said, we're gonna move on to creating an attribute set in the next video.